Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Welcome, I'm Jonathan, the appliance dude here at Curto's in Westchester County. I welcome you to my appliance sanctuary here high atop Central Avenue in Yonkers, New York. Welcome to Mount Appliance. Um, this is video in segment, video installment number one for 2016. I'm starting off bright and early this year. It's January 4th, folks, and it's freezing outside. It's absolutely freezing. Um, especially bitterly cold, especially after the 70 degree weather that we had just a week ago. And um, so what are we gonna do? How are we gonna warm up? Well, we're going to kick off 2016's video posts by talking about a product born, bred, created, birthed, whatever, begot in uh, Southern California. And it's a product that should conjure, conjure images of uh, uh, Blue skies, warm sun, um, let's see, what else? Food, grilling, searing, smoking away, absolutely delicious food, ice cold libations being poured, and uh, lots of other lovely, lovely, lovely things. So the Alfresco is loaded with so many different features, taking it way beyond any other gas grill that I'm familiar with. And uh, the first thing I wanted to focus on was the smoker. Now calling it a smoker is actually sort of unjust because it's far more than that. And actually if you read the Alfresco product literature guide, they actually don't call it a smoker. They call it a smoker, um, oh, an integrated wood smoker and herb infusion system. That's a lot of marketing, mumbo jumbo and jargon there, but hey, I get that it's very creative, so thumbs up. Um, it's cool, it's very cool. They take a different approach than the other premium grill brands, gas grill brands do, because what they do with their smoker is they actually, as they say in their little title there, it's integrated, it's inside the grill, okay? Most of these other guys, Viking, uh, the Wolf, the Lynx, other ones, they have a smoker box that they place, you, you load up with your chips and your you know, moist chips or whatever, and you put it on top of the grill grates. And that's what's supposed to do the job smoking. Quite frankly, I don't think that's the best approach. I mean, let's think, a gas grill is limited right off the bat with the way that it could smoke. It's not really made for that. Um, I don't think by having the smoking tray on top of the grates is the right execution. I like the way Alfresco does it. It's very cool because not only is it integrated inside the grill, it has its own unique, its own smoker burner all for itself. That's cool. A burner just for the smoking tray. I like it. So what we do here, the, the plan, okay, for the test was I was gonna get a, a we're gonna make a chicken. We're going to smoke tiss a chicken, okay? Smoke tiss is a term that I found out has been trademarked by Alfresco. Now, um, what that means is you use a combination of smoking plus the rotisserie to smoke tiss the product, um, the product, the food. Um, now, I'm not going to say that they created this cooking technique because you just have to go watch Stephen Reichlin on Project Smoke or on Barbecue uh, University who has talked about smoke tissering. I think that's what he called a rot uh, was it smoke a smoke tisserie is actually what he referred to, and of course you know Steve Reichlin to me, if I'm a young Skywalker, okay, I haven't decided whether I'm Anakin or Luke. There was a little bit of the dark side floating around here, <laughs> um, but Reichlin is my Obi Wan or my Yoda, okay. Um, he is the man that I go to for all that is knowledgeable, all the, 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 he's a sage when it comes to barbecue and grilling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I have heard him use the term smoke tisserie. So Alfresco, I don't think you own that. But in any case, um, I like the concept. I like the idea of using the smoker with the rotisserie. And what the way I was instructed to do it, to smoke tiss the right way by, by Mr. Dale over at Alfresco, was to smoke your, your chicken or whatever it was for about an hour, and then, or an hour, hour and a half, whatever the time was, and then to finish it, while you're, you're, you're smoking it while 
the food is on the rotisserie, okay? Without the rotisserie infrared burner being on. You do that for an extended period of time, turn the smoker off, and then finish it off with the infrared rotisserie sear burner, the infrared burner, which will then caramelize, it will, uh, it will darken the food, you know, make it crispy, which the smoker is really not going to do. The smoker is not going to provide a crispy skin. I can tell you that by uh, all the times I've cooked on the Kamado grill and on the, uh, the, the Memphis uh, smoker. Smoking does not provide crispy skins. Typically what guys will do, and this comes from Reichland himself, they'll smoke for an extended period of time and then they'll, they'll, um, they'll actually turn the heat up and go to a direct flame for about 20 to 30 minutes to get that deep dark color and the crispiness. Anyway, especially when it comes to making Thanksgiving turkeys if you're smoking turkey. Um, so anyway, so I was going to smoke tiss this chicken. So I have a Bell and Evans chicken, put it on the rotisserie, and the rotisserie will be its own video because there's a lot to talk about this rotisserie system that they have. Um, uh, I have it all trussed up, very, very important. Tie those legs down with butcher string because the bird fell off the rotisserie initially, okay? Um, bird is flavored with uh, pixie dust, uh, which I get at Whole Foods, kosher salt, pepper, um, olive oil and rosemary okay and I think I put some sage inside as well um, with this guy here okay I loaded it up with soaked apple chips I think apple is beautiful works incredibly well with poultry um, but though that was just for smoking what I did also was I infused it with herbs I wanted them to be smoked as well so I put sage in I put rosemary and I chopped up a little bit of garlic loaded it in with the wood chips everything was had been soaked for about a half an hour and then in we went, the smoker burner was lit, very important, you do not light the smoker burner with the tray inside. Remove it, light it, then insert, okay? So after about a half an hour or so, the air started to get perfumed by the smoke and man did it was it smelled intoxicating i mean i lifted up the lid you'll probably see a video running now i mean the whole interior got this like it was almost very mystical looking you're seeing that bird turning on the rotisserie the smoke infusing it but it wasn't like a choking smoke which i've gotten sometimes by using the kamado i'm just like oh i gotta get away from this it was it was a light smoke it was nice it was manageable and it smelled so good and there's another little tip i actually put some water inside this as well so now not only am i smoke tissing i'm steam tissing as well because there's a moisture aspect that's being put into the grilling atmosphere as well okay so i'm steam smoke tissing or steam tissing or something to that effect anyway this is what i did um the bird was securely on the rotisserie we let it go for about an hour, and here's some of the things that I, that I discovered. Number one, they told me not to use the rotisserie burner, the IR burner behind the rotisserie as, at all at this point. They said, just use the rotisserie spit, turning, and only use the smoker burner. To me, that didn't work. That would only, I mean, that would seriously, seriously, ha this would be like a four hour cook. I had to at times turn the center burner okay the normal burner on the grill on to work along with the smoker because every time i had the smoker burner by itself i didn't get up over 200 degrees that's that's almost well cold smoking is technically under 100 degrees i mean i was not about to make this a seven hour cook with this okay so i felt that i needed i mean i needed to be at at least 350 degrees i felt for, with, with this to have this cook in a couple you know whatever a little more than an hour two hours so i had to boost the heat with the middle burner a few times the problem with that is that you have to use a roasting pan underneath the rotisserie spit and they tell you in the manual don't use a roasting pan on the grill grates when one of the main burners is on so that's something i have to figure out but the cooking time was about an hour and 20 minutes, an hour and a half. So I smoked it for about an hour. Every half hour, I would have to change what was in here because they would get burned out. So I would load some more wood chips in, a little more water, a little more herbs. So I think I changed it out about two, two and a half times. Um, what I did finally for the last, oh God, 20 minutes, that's when I put the infrared burner on behind the rotisserie. And you'll see some videos, some pictures, I don't know, there might be some videos as well 
of the bird turning around. And this is when it really started to crackle, when I really started to see some just crazy caramelization going on, skin bubbling, juices coming out of the bird. And that's, you know, the beauty of rotisserie cooking is that you're self-basting. So the juices, yes, some juices, of course, were dripping into the pan, but a lot of the juices were just rolling down the bird. It was being caught by the wing, by the leg, and just self-basting. It was an incredible thing to watch. And yes, I was picking up the lid, probably more so than I should have been, uh, admiring this incredible um, uh, chemical process that was, that, that was in front of my eyes over there. Truly, truly fascinating. So what is the Appliance Dude's end-all be-all conclusion on the smoke tissing technique here in the herb infusion wood smoker, whatever this thing is called, on the alfresco grill? Well, I can't give you an end-all be-all because I'm going to continue to use it, but I can tell you for the first attempt, I really had my, my socks knocked off. I did not think that a gas grill could pull this off. Um, it smoked it incredibly well. The food was so, it was literally perfumed with herbs. It smelled absolutely fantastic, and I couldn't believe the juiciness when I cut into the bird. It was, it, it was incredibly juicy. I mean, I don't see these results with other high-end gas grills that I own. It's usually just, that's, that's kind of like Kamado, Memphis smoking smoker territory. I was stunned at how moist it was. So incredibly moist, tasty, had that nice caramelization on the skin uh, from the infrared sear on the rotisserie. Um, it was just really, really incredible. So I'm really excited to continue to play with this and maybe actually smoke tissue the correct way because I don't know if I was even doing it the right way. Um, so Smoking on the alfresco is it's in a league of its own compared to these other grill brands and, and that I, I will actually state as fact. Um, folks, if there's any other questions, please email, call. There's going to be, if you're interested in an alfresco grill, call me up, email me because I, like I said, I own it, okay? I'm not just some dude that is standing here talking off of bullet points from what the company's like product brochures are or what their website says. I mean, I own it, my hands are getting dirty and I don't care how cold it is, I'm grilling year round and I will take every feature of this grill, smart it, starting with this, okay? We're going to the rotisserie next, we're gonna talk about that and then wait till you see what I've done with the solid fuel insert. Oh, wait, you thought you had to spend $20,000 to get a premium gas grill to cook with wood? Eh, no, you can do it with an alfresco as well now. So anyway, there's so much to talk about. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Please call me, visit. We have a beautiful alfresco display. I'll talk you through it all. Thank you, video post number one for 2016 has ended. Thank you.